all the noise that human beings make is only what we invent, what we believe is real, what is existing. For some, it's nothing at all. If I am left to ask you one question, and the other things we've talked about, we can say, well, let's forget about it, leave it on the shelf. But I'm going to leave you with one question. This will be the question I'll ask you. You must be there. Ultimately, in the final seeing, are you an object being watched by another presence? Or are you the presence in whose view an idea of yourself is watched? For some beings, it's time to be clear about this. Um, thank you very much. Feels really beautiful being in the satsang right now, and a lot of questions are already disappearing. But what was coming up? Like when we've been talking about the ego, or kind of when the sense of I amness is taken over by the charges, or when my attention moves away. Um, like my experiences, a lot of times, I'm especially like in relationship or in interactions, like a charge or a strong personality is coming over, and without even being conscious of it, I'm really getting caught up in a very strong conflict. And then in this I amness, can I just embrace this and say, okay, this is fine, it's fine how I behave, it's how I'm, uh, how I'm interacting, or how much do I need to do a contemplation okay. or saying sorry or kind of uh, going on forgiveness, or how much I just accept for whatever is manifesting? Okay. <clears throat> if, in, if in the middle of some a kind of turbulent mental state, hmm? it is recognized, whoa, you know, it's. You're observing this thing. Hmm? You have the ability to just to, to check in very quickly. That space that you will check into is your natural state of existence, natural state I am, non personal state. You see? You can outwardly, if you're talking with someone, just say, "Listen, I need to take just a moment for a moment to just to focus on what I want to, what I'm listening to." You will find ways of doing this, rather than just feeling that somehow you have to roll on with conversations that you know. You can just say, "Listen, you know what? For a moment, I just need to stop for a second because you said something that I just need to just to uh, to take in a little bit slowly, and just compose yourself for a moment." And that's already will alter the the ambient of the of the exchange, you know. You can do like this, first thing, you see. And because what you spoke about now seem like when you're in a sort of like there's a kind of rush and then it's coming in from, from all sides and you get caught up in the crossfire or something like this. But this is just something that's produced by a kind of mental state where, you know, there's a lot of I, I, me, you, I, me, this, that. So you can learn to stop this for a minute. Just say, look, can I just slow down? And it really works, you know, if you're talking with people and you do this. Uh, don't be afraid of that. If you say to someone, look, I really just, can I just stop for a second with this? And because something you've said, or, or I feel like I'm running away, I'm saying something a bit too quickly here. And also, you give them, a, this is really sharing, in fact, because you're educating also that presence in that moment. Of a truer way of conversing, we don't have to be, you know, with conversations. And sometimes you can stop a little bit and slow down, and just feel where your beingness is without all of this stuff. And then you can come back in when much more focused, more calm, and see where you're going with things as well. 
sometimes conversations we have like this is just a kind of a mirroring back to you of how much you're not really starting in your own truth. That maybe is to do with expectations, and this is why we don't really enjoy um, conversing with people because we don't really converse. You know, I don't know what we chat. I don't know, but we're not really conversing in a way which is, you know, mm, in respect to your own being. So I don't know if the, this also shows that many times the level of the conversations that you are having, perhaps there's no auspiciousness in it even. So it must be mattering to you why you're asking this type of question that I don't want to continue in this type of way where I have a feeling that I'm losing, I'm running away from really where I am. But only you can take charge of this. Mm. Um, my question is more like I can observe afterwards, after the things have happened, like in awareness, okay, here I lost it, here was a strong charge coming up. So, but then how can I prepare myself? Like, is it just enough for me sitting uh, kind of calmly in beingness? You can, yes. Or is there a needed, like, for like a prayer or like going into charges or asking for forgiveness? Is there something personal? Is just the what awareness I, of alone what is happening enough for purifying in a way? Yes. Whichever feels comfortable for you, if prayer, if something feels comfortable for you, this will be effective for you. But also, I would also add to that that if you want to, you can stop for a moment, or when this conversation is finished, you can look at that, and and it's still fresh, it's still raw. Maybe the feeling inside you, the sense that well, you know, I felt like I was being overwhelmed, and you can start your inquiry right there in this feeling. What really is overwhelmed? What is what does it mean to be overwhelmed? What does it mean to be overwhelmed? You know, and and really look at that. What does it mean to be overwhelmed? Is it just something you picked up, a kind of a statement, a saying from other people? What does it mean? Can you be overwhelmed? And who are you who is overwhelmed? These are really important questions. And if you follow quietly, not just by scratching your head, but really allow these questions to really be asked inwardly and be quiet with them as well, something will be revealed in it. Keep your, keep your questions focused. Because the nature of any question that's really important to you, that is part of what's keeping some, some sort of um, uh, blind spot or something like that, and it needs to be seen. When it comes a time to really look at it, some strange phenomena take place. Sometimes you cannot focus on your question. You want to ask the question, you know, what is it that gives me the feeling that I'm, that I'm. I'm not so important, or I'm not important. I is I, I who is important, not important is what? You start to focus the attention. You find to find some blurring is taking place. Like the mind is producing another question, which is easier or something, or suddenly you start to think about how many different ingredients make up muesli, or some some crazy distraction come in, is itself a sign that the question is potent. It's almost it's strange. Oh, within our own being, it can seem to be that there's something inside you don't want to find out what is true. Almost like you know, it will try and substitute a, a true question for something else. So you're very focusing like that. That's why I say keep quiet, remain in that kind of a state of alertness with it, but don't be mental about it, and try and hold the question so it really happens deeply. And you begin to see somehow some space begin to open up. You may find yourself yawning. <gasps> this type of action start to come. It's a way in which uh, these tensions are released uh, when focus is present or when you're in the presence of grace. These type of reactions take place. And follow them, and then so what happens? Whatever work you do now or then, uh, that will then somehow be present with you. Uh, the energy of that clarity will be with you the next time this encounter comes. Um, and in mm. which direction the introspection is going? So if I'm facing myself, if I'm just like looking after such a situation is occurring, I'm putting the question, who am I, instead uh, in going kind of in consciousness and um, distancing me from the experience? Okay, let's talk about, just start from right now. What is it that you want to talk about right now, without the memory of what happened? Check in with yourself. Because very often we're not doing this. You're not paying attention to present moment awareness. 
sometimes you're paying attention to past moment awareness like the memory of something that happened that's still perpetuating its seeds inside memory and you rarely look from now what about now okay. how are you right now starting right. here right now i'm feeling quite tense like in okay. my legs my heart is beating uh. fast i'm kind of nervous and yeah i'm very identified with this with this state, and with this bodily well, okay you sensations. said it there so you you name a few things feeling nervousness there's some tension is there and also something is identified i am identified with this nervousness okay but also there's the awareness of this there's the ob observation of this so the very fact that this can be observed as you have just said you know show that there's a deeper presence of seeing in which comments about what you've just mentioned come come out of it you've just been talking about something that you can perceive the body is a bit tense and so on there is some mental identification or some sense of personality or so all of this is watched this already is in your inquiry you see so if that is being observed okay then it's changeful meaning that if somehow the body relaxes immediately it's seen it's just another sensation some other beings can ignore that altogether. It doesn't matter. The could be, body could be even more tense than you, than yours right now. And their experience could be, I'm in total peace. The body could be like this. He says, how are you doing? Hey, great, great. You see? So tension in the body is not in exchange for peace even. Even the mind, the thoughts could be thrashing about... <laughs> And still there is peace. Well, how long can the mind be thrashing like this? Not long. Because it will require your attention. Just as a fire needs wood to burn, mind will need attention to sustain itself. If there is no interest, no belief, no identity with it, the fire of the mind will go out, what you call mind. It grows on your attention, your interest, energizes the mind energy. So this feeling that these sensations can come up, but it just depends on how much attention goes to them. Presently you think that they are important, so they feel to be important. So therefore monitoring of them is also present, which brings in a kind of tension, like waiting for them to pass. or. You know, when they go, I will be okay. All of these, all of these are thought based. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, in fact. It only matters if you think it matters. If you don't think it matters, it doesn't matter. Unless the mind says something has happened, effectively, nothing has happened. Think about it. Until your mind says, okay, this thing has happened, if it doesn't register, this thing has happened, it hasn't happened, it will not be remembered. Thank you. Mind sometimes, or habit, is such that we are constantly monitoring, somehow taking a report of, of what you call events. They are not events until you write a report about them. What constitutes an event? If I ask you here, what, what's happening here? You may say, well, I could not count, it's just millions of things are happening. I ask you, what is happening here? You say, absolutely nothing. And both of you are right. Why? Because it depends on what's going on, how you interpret. If you feel so many things are happening here, I can't count, then you're going to be not the person to sit next to if I want to be quiet. And if you say, what's going on here? You say, well, actually nothing. I'm just completely empty and still. Then this one you'll enjoy to be. This one will not molest you. It's just where you point your attention and what you say is so. If you if it's not so for you, it's not so. It's like you go to a big game, a great game, football or something. There's a hundred different reporters. There's one game, but there's a hundred different reports, which is true. All is just interpretation. So if you interpret that a lot of things is going on, then a lot of things is going on. For me, nothing is going on. <laughs> nothing is going on. Because to take responsibility for something going on means more is going on. Nothing actually is going on. 
that is making such a profound announcement in my being that I need not forget it. So nothing is happening, nothing is going on. Even if something goes boom, boom and this body goes, whoa, I said, what happened? No, nothing actually. <laughs> it's nothing. Why should it be something? What's the relevance of it being something? It is possible for all things to happen. You will still do what you are meant to do in this body, whether you think something is happening or not. It will still go through what it needs to go through. But it won't leave this heavy smell that so many things are going on. All the noise that human beings make is only what we invent, what we believe is real, what is existing. For some it's nothing at all. It's nothing. It doesn't mean that you sit on your hands. No. Sometimes tremendous activity can be taking place and your inner environment still nothing's going on. Do you know this thing? What constitutes activity even? What do we call work? We went into a restaurant, I think it was yesterday. I was in, uh, where was it? Uh, I'm not supposed to say. Uh, <laughs> in a place, in a restaurant, and the restaurant is empty. There's, you know, 15 people there working all in suits and stuff, all of them folding the same napkin almost. Because mm -hmm. no, they're supposed to look busy. You have nothing to do, but you're supposed to look like you're doing something. So, I mean, is that work? Or as I told you, I saw one man, his job was carving uh, incredibly intricate carvings on the head, head of a matchstick. So all day, only this is going on. Is that work? Yes, yeah, intense work. What do we call activity? So you see, it's all... It's just how your mind thinks. It's coming a time when you won't be bothered about any of these things that mean nothing at all. And still, others may perceive you as being very productive, but inside you don't know what it means. You know, you're just doing your thing. It's just nature compels this body to move like this. In this moment, another moment may be different. It's completely natural. And then you are one with spontaneous existence. You're not saving up to experience later. You're just now. You're in this moment. This is your beautiful freedom. This is our beautiful freedom. You are freedom itself. Space. When you look like this, when you have reflected like this, you come to space. When your inquiry uh, has been followed through, not abandoned prematurely, but followed through, you come back to space, to space. Then you are like space moving through space, light, free, naturally happy. Not more than this. Then you don't even know what spirituality is. You don't know what religion is. You don't know what anything is. <laughs> you don't know. Still other beings want to come and ask you questions, but you don't know nothing at all. You have the feeling, I don't know. Because we are not talking about things. This is not a discussion about things. This is discussion between consciousness and consciousness about consciousness. Not about things, not about bread and butter. You are space, like space. But not just like inert space. You are divine space. Divine spaciousness, peace, unending. Everything else we just imagine, because you have the power to imagine also. All this world is imagined. But to say this now, maybe you reject it. So I said, leave it. Don't listen to me. Follow your I Am. It will take you to the same place. You will see the same things. You were never even born. Can you take that? He 
you will never die. But your idea of who you are will die. Well, it's not even alive. It's just believed in. We don't need to say more about that. <clears throat> Whatever you can see, presently or in any other time frame, through memory or projection, through imagination, hmm, all of this, whatever is perceivable, elementally, emotionally, any sensation, anything that is perceivable, huh, that has quality, it exists without your seeing, without you accepting or saying, it is so. Because it is for you that it appears. Without you, it effectively doesn't exist. It doesn't register. This is how important you are. You are that which, in whose presence all of this is playing. You want to see it, but can you, the seer, be seen? This is my question. In order for something to be perceivable, it must possess some quality. It must have weight, a name size, shape, or something, some quality, to make it distinguishable, discernible. Huh? Without these, it's nothing, it's invisible, it has no quality. So, however subtle any quality is, it is you who perceive it. You who perceive, can you yourself be perceived? Find this out. If I am left to ask you one question, and the other things we have talked about, we can say, well, let's forget about it, leave it on the shelf. But I am going to leave you with one question. This will be the question I will ask you. You must be there. Ultimately, in the final seeing, are you an object being watched by another presence? Or are you the presence in whose view an idea of yourself is watched? How long it will take you? How long it will take you to find this out? Are you material or immaterial? Only you can find it out. If you are material, then something must say, Aha, so this got, got you. So this is actually what I am. Is it possible? Is it possible that you can say, OK, so this, I have meditated, I have contemplated, I have sat with the gods, the demons, the, high, the hierarchy of the heavens, I have sat with them now, and through my own tapas, I have found myself. It's here. This tiny little cashew nut. This is the. This is me. Can you point to anything and say, "Yes, I'm this"? No, you cannot. Because if it has quality, there must be a deeper seeing that's able to discern or perceive this quality. Can you be? What is your position? This is your satsang in a nutshell. If I was left only with one question, only one question. This would be my question for you. Any idea you have about yourself, you can write in the as an autobiography. It cannot be you, I can throw it away. That out of which the quality that you write about, whatever quality emanates out of it. 
but it is perceiving those qualities. Uh, can you place your intimate sense of self outside of that, as an object in its view? Can you do this? Who are you? Everything you comment about personality, mind, memory, all these are in front of you. Even memory is so important, because even the idea of yourself is contained in it. Yet you yourself are able to say, My memory is not as good as it used to be. What is it that can observe memory? You see? It's beyond, it's subtler than memory. Intellect also, you can say. Intellectually, I am not as sharp as I used to be. Two years ago, intellect was much more you know, discerning. Now it's not so. What looks on this, even? All these things you can leave aside. What will remain? Even the most subtle, eh, without which you cannot have the taste even of existence, eh, the feeling, I am. Even this feeling, eh, you are aware of it. You are aware of the feeling of presence inside the body. Who are you? How much practice you need for this? Mantras are for refining the mind and the vital force. But who is watching the mind? You contemplate and you meditate, but something knows meditation. Something says, My meditation was disturbed today. What watches even this? So here, merely intellectual answers will not be enough. Mental answers not enough. Here, only we have to be satisfied. What is this satisfaction? The end of doubt. Hmm? Um, what comes up? How much is there no responsibility left for the person that manifests as me or as Michael or whatever? Can I just completely surrender this, or do I have to do certain improvements? I is what, I is what? establish your identity. You Mike. say if there is no responsibility for Michael, the personality, the the sense of myself, is there more responsibility for this one? Or must I surrender that? I is what? Who must surrender? Michael also. When my experience is that I cannot hold a state where I'm not identified, like during the day, so there is times when I'm really identified. No, no, no. no this is very good. You say you cannot hold on to a state where you're not identified. This is your words. Huh? I cannot hold on to a state where I'm not identified. But what I'm actually saying to you, is that any identified state is going on by itself. It's going on by itself. What have you got to do with it? It's going on by itself. If something identification arises inside, you did not order it today and want to be identified, it happens by itself. Huh? Simply there is a recognition of that, but there is no effort to try and pacify that even. If you turn away from it, effectively it suffocates. This is what the sages did with most things from the mind. You want to know a shortcut between samsara and nirvana? Samsara, nirvana. That's it. <laughs> they turn away from it. That's it. Something, all this, you know, what I should do? Um, is it responsible of me? And maybe I can, what should I do? Should I contemplate? Maybe should I pray? And that's it. 
But for some, you turn away and some. Yes, but you know, you're turning away is no worse. <laughs> like this, it happened. Some things you can turn away from, you can turn away, but maybe there are some things you cannot turn away from because they are so deep in your psyche, you see, that it's not yet strong enough to ignore them. Then you must inquire them. For whom is this so oppressive? Keep quiet and send your attention inwardly. Find out, see who suffers this. Don't change your question until you can find who suffers this. Uh, see if you can find who suffers any state, who is afraid. Just keep quiet. Hold the question. Who is afraid here? Because a strong message is here. I'm afraid. I can't cope. This is going to be too much for me. Uh, please help me. And who is suffering? My question. Please find out. Because you know why? Until now, nobody is asking this question. They're giving you tablets. I'm afraid. Oh, take a uh, uh, confident tablet. No, but who actually is afraid? Who suffers this fear? Ask and find out. I can tell you the answer, but it won't be any good for you. Find out and tell me your findings. Who suffers? Experience uh, your findings. Experience your findings and show what is it. This is the master key. You catch hold of this one, and all your questions they will begin to die, dissolve. If you believe in your mind deeply, your questions will multiply. They will keep on coming. You are not your mind. Mind is an aspect of you. It's one of your powers, great power, enormous power. But it comes after you. You are the weakness of mind. When you know this, huh, everything begins to align itself spontaneously. When you don't know this, you'll be pulled about. For some beings, it's time to be clear about this. So that in another few months, you're not having more questions. Still, more questions are coming. More and more questions. Thirty years of questions. Forty years of questions. Something must be wrong. Something has been missed. Hmm? Some beings are coming here after two or three satsangs. They're seeing. They're seeing it. But it's, but it's, but this is it. I, cannot. I saw the mistake. Hmm? I'm seeing the mistake. It's not about how much more I learn. There's no more. There's not much more experience you need to have, actually. Eh? It's just the recognition needs to take place. How I don't know. When I don't know. You're here. It has to happen. There's not something else being discussed here. So it has to happen. If there is within the aspiration, you see. Because some people, as it comes, I've seen it here also, some of you have noticed, when it comes to that crucial point of discovery, some people start to leave, they start to leave, go out. Uh, sorry, you can lunch, lunch, they have to go. Huh? They're going to discover the infinite. I'm not going to die ever, but sorry, a lunch, uh, that's a little, I don't want my chapatis to get cold. Hmm? Or they off to go out. Sorry, I'm gone to go out. Such is the nature of mind. It's like something inside. Maybe it's a fear that if you discover the truth, it will be too costly. It will create too much change in your life. So you are dedicated to your attachments or something. All is the Self, the Supreme, the Eternal, the Everlasting, the Ever-Perfect. You are this. But it's possible that this body falls without knowing this. Yesterday, Ari was reminding me of a song that says, Die now, so that you don't have to die again. Hmm? 
Finish it now. You are space, like space, but not just like inert space. You are divine space. Divine spaciousness, peace, unending. Everything else we just imagine, because you have the power to imagine also. All this world is imagined. But to say this now, maybe you reject it. So I say, leave it. Don't listen to me. Follow your I am. It will take you to the same place. You will see the same things. Finish it now. 